Welcome to the Fantasy NASCAR Podcast brought to you by RaceForThePrize.com. It's the Saturday morning Xfinity Series show for Texas. Glad you could be with me. You've moved on from cartoons to watching DFS videos and eating cereal. I don't know if that's much of an upgrade. You can see the spreadsheet on your screen. You can get that at RaceForThePrize.com. Venmo, PayPal, Cash App, 20 bucks for the rest of the month, and you can join the team. We would love to have you. Things are growing here. Good times. <clears throat> no real surprises from practice. The drivers that we expected to be fast were fast. You can see them right now ranked and where I'm projecting them. And I think that this is pretty conservative with projections. No, I mean, no real surprises. We do expect a couple long runs. And so the long runs should come from the fastest cars, which are Cole Cusp, Chandler Smith, Allgaier. And you can go down the list. And any of those drivers there in the top 10 are going to be like the candidates to take advantage of said long run. And then after nailing your hogs slash dominators, with your build, you're going to want to maximize with your third and fourth pick, getting some place differential and finishing position. So no real changes from our research early in the week. And then you're going to have to dip down and try to find the value driver that's likely going to hang in the top 20 and then maybe benefit from restarts at the end, attrition at the end, Rex at the end, and just have good restarts and possibly finish a little bit better than their average running position. One of the strategies with that is to sort of fade the public with some of these value drivers because most people will look at the practice lap by lap data and look at the value guys and try to find, well, who was the fastest. And while that does make sense, we also know that it doesn't always make sense. And we've seen, especially at Texas, it doesn't always make sense. What we really need is you just to be fast enough to hang on to the lead lap and then take advantage of the circumstances at the end where it's not going to matter how fast you were in practice. It's going to be a matter of survival, good restarts, and the race just playing your way. And so you can possibly differentiate and get to the top of that GPP by slightly going off the board and not necessarily picking the drivers with the fastest lap times down here at the bottom. And it's always worth looking at all of their laps because some guys ran longer than others, more laps than others. That hurts their averages. Being fast on one lap really isn't the best indicator. So diving into specific laps, and one of the things you can look at if you have the spreadsheet is to look at when they pit. You know, Ryan Sieg was fast out of the gates, and he only tuned on his car once. To me, that signifies he's pretty happy with his car. Just Nogire doesn't tune on his car at all. He goes out and makes a big long run, which we've seen him before, which tells me that he is pretty happy with his car. Uh, we see Cole Custer. He runs 15 laps before they make a slight change, and they make a couple and make a short run here at the end. But again, that tells me probably pretty satisfied. Sheldon Creed. He comes in and makes some changes a little bit earlier. I mean, it's going to be up to you to decide. But when you see drivers constantly coming down pit road, making an adjustment, coming down pit road, making an adjustment, they're not that happy or satisfied with their car. Chandler Smith, not until lap 17. Tells me he's pretty happy. He did report a smoke issue. I think that's just because he's on high alert after Martinsville. The team said it was probably just a little bit of rubber on the valve. No big deal. So no worry there. Uh, you can also look at uh, Taylor Gray, who just went out there and ran. Again, telling me that pretty happy. And when we see the JGR Toyotas across the board pretty satisfied with their initial setup, means that they are pretty close and they nailed it. And the JGR Toyotas should all be fast. You can say the same for Ryan Truex. Now, he's lower on my board for average running position, but that's because he ran a major run. So he has a ton of laps. And so these laps way on the back end are going to lower his overall speeds because he ran, what, 33 laps? But the fact that he went out there and just ran and ran and ran and ran, again, it alerts me that the JGR Toyota is probably who I want to target. Now, this will probably be a long podcast, so I want to get to some of the quick points because I know most people are short on time and you probably don't want to stick around too long. I really do appreciate it if you stick around for the whole video. It helps with the algorithm. <clears throat> These are some place sitters from earlier in the week. I think they pretty much hold up for the most part. We'll mess around with some builds here in a second. But if you do bounce out early, go ahead and hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. Consider going to racesforthprice.com. Vimo, PayPal, Cash App, pitching in. We're monetizing now. We're doing live shows now. Everything's growing. It's exciting. It's a big deal. Thanks for joining me, jumping over to this channel. The big question you're going to struggle with today is Chandler Smith, Allgaier, Cole Custer. You could possibly even throw in a Jesse Love. You can throw in a Ryan Truex. Maybe you're bold enough to go to Taylor Gray thinking that 
even if he doesn't lead laps, maybe he gets fast laps, top three finish, could possibly slide in as the third pick. But really, the big question is, all right, is it going to be Smith, Algar, Custer? You're likely going to want to roster two of them. I don't expect one driver to completely run away with this race. I think each will get their opportunity to score fast laps and laps led. And I don't mind two of the three in any combination. And then with three and four, you're really targeting top 10s place differentials. And then you're likely going to be in the sixes and even lower with some of your value options. We can see over here on the left, right now, as of Saturday morning, it could change, but I don't think there's going to be significant changes with my projections or with anyone's projections. And I think this is pretty much where everyone else is going to be. Obviously, these are ceiling projections saying, all right, Custer leads a lot. Smith leads a lot. It's not a lot led for Smith that I'm giving love I'm giving him. He could do more. He could do less. Again, it's a pretty conservative projection, but still right now at 8,500, given his position, he's still tracking the 6.1 play, and the optimizer likes him at the moment. Allgaier is right there. He's just as expensive as Smith and Custer, and he is in the conversation. Sheldon Creed intrigues me. Sheldon Creed always intrigues us. We know the story with Sheldon Creed. Uh, he's a great GPV play, like twice a year. <laughs> he showed good speed. Again, he's a part of that JGR stable, and he's looked pretty sharp. He's got plenty of experience at this track. Uh, maybe it was a little bit much to expect him to just quickly adjust to his new team. We do need to give him a little bit of slack there. To expect him just to jump into the Toyota, a new team, and, auto, uh, and be lights out. Sure, some guys can pull it off. But, you know, it's understandable that Creed hasn't been that great to start the season. Could definitely turn it around this weekend. And I know it hurts to roster Creed. But he is a place to go that no one else wants to go. He does put in some place differential. The car looked just as fast. The Toyotas looked just as fast. And he doesn't necessarily need to run away with the show. If he can run in the top three, he could possibly top five, get some fast laps, get some place differential, and he could work. The Benedetto is showing up pretty solid right now for me. The speed was decent. Sieg's team looked pretty solid, not surprisingly, right? They are this season the top of the mid-pack. They're inside the top 20. Ryan Sieg was really fast. And he might be a little bit too much of a push. It looked like it had top 10 speed. Now, having top 10 speed in practice and delivering that in the race, kind of a tough order. And we can look. One of the things that you can always do if you just sort them by projections and then kind of rank them. If you've got Sieg finishing eighth, and so right now on this board, he's the 14th driver down, that means he has to elevate above six of these drivers. And that's not going to be easy. It's going to be tough for him to get by Hill. Now, you can maybe give him a spot with Jones. Maybe Mayer has a, a, a fail. So there's two spots. It's up to about 12th. Poss like the rest of these guys, it's going to be a tall order to get ahead of them. He has speed, but this is an absolute ceiling projection, and it's going to be hard. So I'm going to dime lash down the 9, and then that's going to lower him to a 5.1x return, ninth best value play. And I think he's probably going to fall off the board. Now, I wouldn't mind revisiting that. And we see him slide down here in our overall rankings. Sammy Smith at 9,300. Intriguing play. Maybe a pivot off of Jesse Love. And he's just benefiting from getting a little bit of what place differential. Starting ninth. Again, I think fourth is pretty aggressive with him. Speed was decent. Did he lay down a fast five lap? No. But overall, you look at some of his fall off on a long run, which we expect a couple long runs. We expect Rex, and we expect long runs. We'll look at Sammy Smith's laps, and this is pretty solid. These 12 laps, very competitive. Puts him right there, knocking on the door of the top five. Comes back out, still is running some pretty quality speeds. 174.2 on lap 19. That 174.2 is right up there with, you know, Cole Custer. So there is speed in the junior motorsports cars. And as I alluded to last week, just like we talked about with Creed, probably took some time to adjust to the new team. And it seems that he's adjusting and he is improving. And he's still kind of new to us in general. And maybe we need to start showing him a little bit more respect and understanding him as a race car driver. So I'm not against going there. 
It just depends on how your build shapes up. Josh Williams, 15th place race car. They are, again, a team that is slowly getting it together, working it together. A, a lot more comfortable in practice this week. It's not the greatest, but when we start to look at the backpack or the bottom of the top tier, I don't think they're bottom of the top tier anymore. I think they're backpack. But the speeds are there. He's comfortable at this racetrack, has plenty of experience. I think he knows what he is going to be doing, and I could see him finishing in 15th place. Might be a little bit of a stretch, but for him to get to 15th, I think he can get there just through attrition. He doesn't really have to pass a lot of great guys in front of him to climb up to 15th. Now, I don't think he's better than Kligerman, but I think he's better than Alfredo. Himes hit or miss at times in that hunt car, and hunt car wasn't really that great this weekend. And overall, hunt hasn't had quite the speed that I would expect. And in general, we would expect, like if this was last season, you had Kulig versus Hunt, you would take Kulig. And we've downgraded Kulig a little bit, but as they go week by week, they're Results are probably going to normalize. They're probably going to improve. They're going to get better. Uh, could he get better than Sieg? Yeah. So 15th, not too much of a stretch. Maybe a little bit it's right there, borderline. If we dial him down to 16th, that 5.1 is going to drop, and he's going to be a little bit tighter of a play. The value just really isn't popping off too much. There's Sieg. It's a dangerous play. Taylor Gray. It's kind of in that Jesse Love, Sammy Smith category. Of we've already got a custom. We've already got a Chandler Smith in our lineup. Do we want to go gray? Do we want to go Love? Do we want to chase the place differential with Sammy Smith? Going with T Jesse Love is going to save you the most money. And that's what the optimizer is saying at the moment. And so we slide him in. And we got two guys here. Boom. And that gives us 9,400 left over. So we get the four big guys that we want, and we've got two value plays that we don't really like necessarily. But when we go down to these value plays, there's not one just screaming at us. We can flip around here with Matt DiBenedetto and do some tweaking, and that might be where most people go. And I don't mind that because his qualifying effort wasn't that great. He could knock on the door of a top 15, probably around 18th place. I expect DiBenedetto to be popular. But again, we're not seeing a lot of value plays so far on our board. Brennan Poole is the first one that pops up. He's running well this season, decent in practice. I don't have him having to do too much. I think I got him in 18th place, which is feasible given his speed and practice and what he's done. And then you factor in the attrition. So starting 25th, actually I got him only getting the 20th, which may be very conservative given what he's done this season. His Alpha Prime TJM truck or car has been pretty solid so far. So that really isn't much of an exception again. So he's the 27th down at the moment. So for him to move the 20th, he's got to pass some of these guys I got kind of ahead of him. Clements, Weatherman, Burton, Deegan, Redside, like all these drivers are guys that he can pass. And then you throw in attrition, you throw in issues during the race. It's not a stretch to see him go from 25th to 20th in this race, given that he has been pretty solid this season. And we look at his finishes of what, 14, 15, 20, 19, 20? That's probably pretty conservative. So Brennan Poole probably going to be one of your favorite value picks. One of the guys I loved early in the week. Everything worked out. So he is going to provide some of the value that we probably are going to look to. Expect him to be popular as well. After everybody watches this video and shares this video and recruits people too. RaceSurprise.com. Herbst is fast. Herbst looks fine. But I don't think Herbst has anything for all our Smith or those guys. And I really don't even think he's that much better than the rest of the 9K drivers. He could have a good day, but I don't see him scoring a lot of fantasy points in this race. SVG, probably just a little too expensive. Clearly was just out there trying to get laps and get comfortable. And, you know, it's Texas. It's high speed. It's kind of a wild race. I don't mind that he went out there and wasn't fast in practice. But I don't think he's going to be fast in the race either. We haven't seen him make a lot of passes. We haven't seen him be very aggressive on the racetrack. He's just learning this thing. And I believe I got him projected to go to 20th place. Um, now, if there's carnage and chaos and attrition, he could be that chaos. He could work. Truex is down pretty low just because I'm not expecting him to lead laps. Could he lead laps? Yes. But he did even mention in practice kind of his experience factor kind of stinks because he's running a lot of plate races lately. 
And so there's a lot of adapting going on. And with that kind of, I guess, lack of confidence, I don't expect them to be really aggressive in stage one and two and really push the issue. But you're really going to have to. If he wants to take the lead early in this race, you got to push. you got to be aggressive. You also need long runs. So all those things have to come in place. And I just don't see those falling in place in this race. And as like, you know, the outside JGR guy, he's going to be very solid, happy to stay in contention for most of the race, maybe attack at the end. And that's fine, but it really limits the amount of fantasy points that he could score at an elevated price tag. We know this is a good car, but you compare and contrast that to Eric Amrola or any of the other part-time drivers. And you think, all right, Almirola is a little bit different of a situation. He's going aggressive from the very beginning. He is at tracks that he's very comfortable with. He's on the attack, and that allows him to score a lot of fantasy points. He's got nothing to lose. Ryan Truex, on the other hand, still trying to make a name in this industry, trying to get a spot, trying to work with teams, trying to prove to people that he can drive. Now, on one hand, he said, well, he needs to go out there and crush a race. Yeah, but before he really crushes races, he needs to earn solid finishes and just run well and be there at the end. And a be there at the end produces not a lot of fantasy points. Kyle Sieg is unfortunately showing up. Again, though, the Sieg cars have been fast. Kyle's been pretty respectable over his career. As long as he keeps it clean and avoids a mechanical failure, he's going to be right there in that 20 to 25 range. At the moment, I've got him projected at 19, which might be a little bit much. But his speed and his experience, it's not too far off from these drivers. So to get up here, he could. I might want to dial that down a little bit. And if I do, he'll fall a little bit down. I mean, just a 4.8x. Again, I, the value is not that great where we initially set, stand. At the end of the day, there could be huge home runs because of Rex. So then, if that's the case, right, right now, if we have a conservative race, there's not a lot of value. And our value drivers are not going to be that great. But if there's chaos, then really they're all in play. And Kyle Sieg's fine. But then again, if there's chaos and they're all in play, then did you really need to go to Kyle Sieg? It's really where you stand. Are we going to get Rex at the end? And I guess the bigger question is, can Kyle Sieg hang on to the lead lap and benefit from those chaos at the end? And I would say yes. He's right there on the borderline. of He will stay on the lead lap and should be safe-ish and be able to go after at the end if he does. Now, Kyle Sieg is also not one of those drivers that we really highlight that are probably incredibly aggressive at the end of a race and getting a bunch of positions. Daniel Dye, well, let's we'll continue to go down through our value board, make it quick because people might be leaving out. We'll jump into laps and mess around with lineups here in a little bit. Who's next? Parker Retzlav. Price is just a little too high. It is intriguing because he is starting 29th. And Retzlav has been a 15th place car at times. I don't know if he has a 15th place car this weekend. It looks like Jeb Burton has a little bit better of a ride. He does have a 21st place finish in the 2022 fall race at Texas. He's been a solid driver this year. Las Vegas being his worst. I believe he had an issue there. Got in a wreck in a mechanical situation. I just don't think he works at the 7,500 if we're spending for a Custer, if we're spending for an all guyer. And so that's what the projections are saying. Uh, Deegan, halfway decent in practice. We expect her to be slightly better than what she has been at the intermediate tracks. Overall, the AM cars have been pretty good. Could be fine. But again, if we're expecting wrecks, she probably is going to be one of those wrecks. Uh, but again, look, the point per dollar plays, and these guys are so close and gals that I don't mind going to the spot. Brandon Jones did not like his car in practice. Just looked like the typical Brandon Jones. I don't believe you need to go there. Jeb Burton, 6,500. I believe he's starting too close to the front. Where is Jeb starting? 21. Been around a 20th place race car this year. Pretty solid in practice, but I just don't see the spots that he can gain from there. He can get a couple of these guys, but he's going to need a little bit more. He's going to need a little bit more carnage, but then that's going to benefit cheaper drivers starting further back. That opens our lineup up a little bit more, and so Burton probably not going to work. Fredo starting too close to the front. Weatherman at 6,100. 
probably starting right about where he finishes, throw in some attrition points, still probably doesn't quite get there. Clement starting too close to the front, only ran two laps in practice, a little bit of a worry there. Uh, maybe they know what they're doing. Either way, too close to the front. Sugar Daddy, Leland Honeyman, starting about where he's going to finish. So that hurts his playability. But he is super cheap. Actually, no, he's not. 31st, 4,600. Didn't really show any speed. I got him projected at 26. Man, he could probably do a little bit better than that. I know why I'm being so hard on Honeyman. Am I overreacting to practice? Sometimes I got to review my own thoughts. When you look at his finishes, he's getting there. And he hasn't been like lights out in any of these practices. He goes in and delivers and races. And so again, it could be the sugar daddy trying to take it easy in practice. Let's see what honey did. What honey do? A couple good laps. Didn't really like it. Tires have already fallen off. So not the greatest practice session. Results in not the greatest qualifying session. They missed it a little bit or a lot of it. They're going to have to figure it out. What if I dial him up a little bit? 4,600. 31st. Seems pretty appealing. Let's give him 25. I mean, he's typically finishing better than that. And nice 5X. He's 13. I think the Alpha Lamp is going to start considering Leland Honeyman. Back to our optimizer. See, where did Honeyman? So Honeyman jumps way up here on our board. Ryan Elsa, 4,900, starting in the back. Hasn't been in the best TJM car. Didn't show us anything in practice. Never shows us anything in practice. Uh, let's, I mean, last week he was slow in practice again. And what did Ellis do last week for us at Martinsville? Oh, that's right. Mar he was running in the top 15 at the end of that race. Now, again, it's probably inflated a little bit because his average running position, his rating rank was 26th. But if he can run in 26th, starting 36th, he's right there with the honeymoon play. Uh, we've expected more. He hasn't delivered. This could be the week they break through. You look at Las Vegas, his driver rating. He was the 24th best driver in that race. Got to finish the 22nd. So we probably shouldn't overreact to him not being fast in practice. I don't think Ryan Ellis ever really shows much in practice. I think week by week, he probably will steadily improve as he becomes a full-time driver with this team. What do I got him at? 28. Let's cruise him up to 27. And now he's at 4.9. He's at 15. He's going to jump up the board just like Honeyman. And he's going to open up a lot of different lineup builds for us. David Starr's another guy that's intriguing. You'll look at David Starr's laps, and you'll say, nah, I'm not really interested in this guy. He was the slowest overall on average laps. Didn't show any speed. David Starr is jumping in a car for the first time, I believe, this season. Uh, he always races at Texas and always performs pretty well in his home state of Texas. Not great, but gets through the laps, has decent finishes. I don't think he was really out there pushing it in the daughter car by any means. It's Texas. It's hairy. We saw the trucks wrecked in the practice at Texas. I believe he played it safe. Did he play it too safe? Possibly. I'm not really worried about the speed in the daughter car. The daughter cars have been pretty solid throughout in terms of running in the back of the mid pack. They're not absolute turds. So I don't think he's as bad as some people might react. Again, people will probably look and see what David Starr, 32nd on a five lap run. And they're not going to be very excited, especially at 5,400. But we can't deny that he's starting 38th. We can't deny that he has been pretty good at Texas. It's hit or miss, obviously. But you're going to get that, especially when he's jumping into random cars that could fail, could get into wrecks. I've got him finishing 28th. And really, for him to get there, he's got to beat Balick. He can do any of these drivers below him. He has a pretty good chance of outracing. And then also being dead last, DFL on the field, shotgun on the field, he benefits more than any other driver in terms of chaos. Every driver that doesn't finish the race is a position point for David Starr. Everyone. No one else has that scenario. Anyone that fails is a spot for him. Anyone that has issues is a spot for him. And so if he outraces half of these drivers, gets some failures, he's right there in that 28 range. And so the optimizer is liking David Starr at the moment. I know we're pretty low on the value board at 4.4, but these are conservative projections. 
and qualifying and practice pretty much shaped up how we thought it would. And so there's not any real surprise value plays available. So David Starr, I think you lower your standards this week and you lower your bar for the star and you include him. And he works under that approach. And he also works if there's chaos and carnage as long as he is not the car that fails. Dye's not showing up because he shows up a little too high on our starting grid. Should have a good day for Colleg, but how high can he go? How many fantasy points can he really earn? Um, had a solid day, even though he spun out at Texas last season. 17th place finish for Colleg last year. I wouldn't expect much more than that. Probably a little lower given the quality of the cars this season. You put him at 19th. He's not quite getting there. Maybe you boost him up for attrition, just to see. I'm gonna go back though. Uh, he's a 5X and he's all right, but I'm not really that comfortable with that projection at all, to be quite honest. We'll split the difference. We'll throw him at 18. And he's just the 20th best play in terms of point per dollar. I think I would probably like to go save a little bit more money than that. And we flip down. AJ could have a good day. Just don't think it's going to happen. Not really intrigued by what I've seen with Perkins. And do I need to go through? I think all these guys probably just aren't going to work. Mayor's got to avoid bad luck. Parker Kligerman could have a good day. But the top of the field looks to have separated a little bit. And I just don't see. I know he had big machines been good at this racetrack. I get it. And there could be absolute chaos that opens the door. But I just don't see the Toyotas and then even All Guy or maybe even Sammy Smith conceding too many spots to Parker Kligerman. Top 10 looks pretty locked in, and uh, Kligerman's going to have a hard time getting in there. Cram, just that car did not look very good. I don't see him getting very much further. I know he's had a couple good weeks at the short tracks, but now that we go to the intermediate track, uh, the speed is probably going to be more devastating four daughters cars and so that's an argument against david Starr. but yeah if we are liking bobby daughter at richmond and martinsville one of the issues is we're going now to a track where all right you got the horsepower you got the speed you got the setup and maybe daughter doesn't have it so if you are weary of playing david Starr because we don't really like what we saw of cram then that's definitely in the conversation i again well, of course, Corey Heim looked great in the trucks, but the Hunt car has not quite been as fast as we'd like to see. Now, that could change at the intermediate track, but I think the other cars are just a little bit up there more. Austin Hill, his practice times were fine. Just don't really love Austin Hill at the intermediate tracks right now in his career or the RCR cars unless they're starting at the very front. I don't think they've got much to compete with the top of Junior Motorsports or with JGR. Smithley, JD didn't really look that swiftly. He is not really even 25thly. We've got him starting in the back, but I have a hard time seeing that JD car really sliding up here and competing in the top 20 with other cars that are faster, that have been faster. Emmerling's always a no, Gase is always a no. Balicki jumping in. Part time, we'll look at the Licky real quick. It is a Gosling car, which are typically a little bit better. Maybe he was a little bit conservative in his approach, but I would much rather see a driver who is running every single week, much more connected to the team. Um, Blicky's never really a guy that we can trust anyway. I just, I don't think I can go there. I don't think I need to go there. 28th, he's not starting deep enough. He's not quite cheap enough. Didn't really show us a lot. What has he done for us this season? Coda, you throw it out the window. It doesn't matter. Did run well at Richmond, but again, it's a short track. Hard to extrapolate that and say that he's going to be fast at a racetrack like Texas, especially when we've seen him practice. He really wasn't all that fast. And then Chad Fincham is out there bringing in sponsors, torn people in the facilities. That's basically what we're looking at there. So we go back up to our builds and kind of play around. We got Chan Smith, we got Jesse Love, we got Cole Custer, Brendan Poole, we got the Honeyman, and you go 9,400 with this build. 
and you can't get the all guy you can't get the creed but there's sammy if you believe in sammy smith and we got sammy over here with 50 fantasy points it's a really good day it's our seventh best point per dollar play that seems quite appealing who else can we get 9400 you can't get to herps i'm fine with that and taylor gray runs in the top three all day fast laps jgr toyota don't mind that at all we'll stay away from jones I would probably stay away from AJ Allmendinger. So as far as that build goes, that's that. Now, if we swap, we go a little bit more expensive, and say we go with Justin Allgaier. Uh oh, we don't need the source data on the screen. Swap him in, and we got 9,200. We no longer get Sammy Smith. So sad. Too bad. But you can actually pro I mean, I think you can go any cheaper than Leland Honeyman. You cannot. How about we get real cute? You wanna get real cute? Let's see. Just for gigs. No, no, no. What's the cutest that I'm willing to go? We'll take Honeyman. And Hell, we'll do it. I don't really like doing this. I think it's kind of stupid, but hey, whatever. I don't think anyone's going to fall in love with our two punts, to be quite honest with you. And that is kind of where I'm leaning. And again, you can watch the videos previous in the week where we look at some of these value plays and how it's all worked out. You can see all these in the fancy NASCAR spreadsheet. Uh, preferably, I want a driver who can hang in the top 20 and then benefit the end to get a came close to the top 20 and then get to around 15th place. I don't know if we're going to be able to get it. Now, if you look, Ryan Ellis was optimal at this track last year, but again, he was running around 21st place. I don't know if he can do that this year. But he did start 30th, big day. Alfredo did it as well, and that was in a BJ car. These were not great cars that these guys were able to do it. And we even went to Kyle Sieg. Kyle Sieg is showing up, I believe, in my current optimizer run. Kyle Sieg started 26th, or no, he started 19th, similar kind of where he is, ran pretty well, finished really well. Again, we get restarts, chaos at the end, it's going to boost these guys up. But they weren't absolute junkers that we were taking. Now, you got, again, you got Matt Mills and a BJ card, not the greatest equipment, ended up in the optimal lineup. CJ runs really long at the end. It makes it work if you didn't watch that video. But again, he got a 35th. He was running in 25th. Play the strategy game. We're going to get situations that unfold that elevate some guys over the others. Just the way it is, it's CFS NASCAR. Let me look one more time to see if I can convince myself to play a driver that I really don't want to play. Again, you got CJ starting 36th and seed car. Not the best seed car. Massey for Gosselin, 25th. And you also had David Starr, who wasn't in the optimal lineup, starting 29th, running in 26th all day, benefit at the end. We need to know how to make mistakes. We need a solid approach. We need experience. Um, we don't really get that from Honeyman. Uh, we might get that from Ryan Ellis. Again, if you look at those drivers, you aren't really all that comfortable, maybe slightly more comfortable. Again, I would love to get drivers running close to the 20th. It'll benefit at the end and maximize finishing position. But I am open to taking drivers that I'm not comfortable with and hoping for some sequences towards the end of the race that open up the value. And so then you put in Ellis and the Honeyman. Now I got 9,800. Still can't get the Creed. Now, if I swap out Allgaier and go to Cole Custer, then I can get the Creed, which is a very interesting build. Now, we also need to explore maybe not playing Jesse Love. Um, we can get basically anybody we want at this point. Can't get to Truex. But again, I'm not as crazy about Truex, right? He's ranking a lot lower. What about value-wise? We, we can get the Smith if you're an early believer. We can get Taylor Gray if you like the JGRs. Herbst, not really my favorite play. But again, he's not terrible in terms of point per dollar. Scrapes off some fast laps. Could do a little bit of some surprises for us. Kind of got to wait and see there. 
just a quick look at the practice laps for those that might want to see them. So there you can see kind of when they're coming in and out. Um, this gives you a little bit better of an idea when we sort things out and you can see some real decent long run speeds. If we were able to remove some of the situations of cycling in and cycling out and just looking at, all right, rank the laps, give me the best laps to the worst laps. And let's just see who ran the most pretty good laps because average can get skewed by when you're pitting in and out. So five, 10, 15 lap average can be tough. Let's just see how many times did you go out there and how many times were you fast and just rank it. And then we can see on the screen, the fade in the green, the darkness of the green who really seems to have speed. And if you look close and squint, you'll see that JGR Toyota, JDR Toyota here. Well, actually, we'd like to see a little bit more speed from Creed. But there is Chandler, Custer, seeming to care a lot of speed. Allgaier really falling, firing off well, maybe falling off a little bit. You look at Taylor Gray really carrying speed throughout his run. So you can see all this. Raceforthepricess.com if you want to get access to that. Venmo, PayPal, Cash App. You can see it on the screen right there. PayPal, Venmo, Cash App. Join us, like us, subscribe to us, join us. One of us, one of us. Really blessed to have you guys around. Truly am to see the growth in the channel. It is awesome. People are coming on over. Keep coming. Keep bringing people with you. It's awesome. Let's do this. 3Ds, diapers, daycare, and Mickey D's. Help support my family, and I will support you as much as I possibly can, making it easy for you to build lineups, saving you time, and hopefully having fun in the process. All right, let's just get out of love. Let's fall out of love and get super cheesy. How about we go to Sammy Smith? Doesn't really save us anything. Tightens things up a little bit. Let's get out of this double punt. Let's go with the Divinity play because it's saying that it is the preferred value play. Heck, maybe he has top 10 upside. That puts me in the 7K range. All right, point per dollar wise, where can I go up to 7K? I can take Josh Williams. The only issue is I've got three drivers that I'm not really top tier drivers. Now, my first things are, oh, well, has that worked in the past where you have three drivers that aren't necessarily top tier drivers? If we get chaos and carnage and the place differential comes through, that's fine. Let's look at this lineup. You got one, two, three big dogs and then three value guys. So, yeah, that's how it played out last year. One big guy, a second guy, place differential guy, and then we're saving and getting place differential. It's a little more of a chaos race. How about this one? Big dog, big dog, big dog. 22 fall, argue, not the greatest, but again, it is a driver marked above 8,500 and then just really two straight value plays. So here, let's see, we got one biggie, two biggie, three biggie, four biggie, and then we're going cheekies. But so far we got four top tier teams and two values, just one time with a three. Biggie, 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 value, value. Biggie, biggie, value-ish, value, value, value. Now, this is a cow bush slate, so you may want to take that one with a grain of salt. And then we got biggie, biggie, value, value. Eh, we'll give Brandon Brown value, value. Actually, wow, that's four in the value range. Actually, no, Anthony Alfred at 9,600. I don't understand why he was priced that high. Whatevs. You tell me. There's some anomalies I see occasionally when you go through all state. It's crazy. Either way, I think the takeaway there is that we are looking at would really like to roster four drivers from the top tier and then find two value drivers. So 7,000. That stings a little bit. Is there a cheaper top tier guy that I can get to outside of Sammy Smith? So where can I say? Obviously, Jesse Love is one of those drivers. Who's a top tier driver that's going to save me a little bit of cash? Hmm. Questions as we wrap up here. Boy, do you go to the Ryan Sieg dance? I don't know. Something to explore. Yeah, I just don't know when I look at these salaries if there is a, a four guy build that I really love that doesn't involve Jesse Love. And I'm not completely in love with Love. Especially if we are banking on Smith and Custer really to roll and all guard really roll, it's going to hurt the value of love. Yeah, that's tough. I think it is ultimately going to be three top tier 
and some values that you're not that crazy about. But again, who else is going to score points? Because we don't see a lot of the back end of the top tier being affordable. We don't see the back end of the top tier really expected to produce points. We don't expect the mid pack to really score a lot of points. Barring crazy, crazy stuff. But if it's crazy, crazy stuff, then that also benefits the bums in the back. So saying that out loud, I guess I don't mind taking three value drivers. I don't mind taking bums in the back. Not necessarily because there's going to be chaos. There could be, and that would be great. But because the way the field stacks up, the way the projections work out, I don't see really any other place to go. Pretty locked in. They qualify where they qualify. They're going to finish about there. We see some drivers that can score. And I mean, maybe you find a diamond in the rough in that top tier for that fourth pick. That's going to take some digging. That's what you should get into. That's a great way to differentiate from the field. But right now where it stands, it looks like it's a 3-3. Three, three, unless you put in love. You put in love, and you can kind of make it work. You can tinker a little bit. But that puts a lot of pressure on that love pick. You get out of love, fall out of love, you're going 3-3. Three, three, and you're, thinking, you're just accepting that. I just don't think anybody else is really going to have a monster day from the mid-back. I don't think anyone else is going to have a monster day from the back. And we'll just take the most efficient we can. And we'll accept something around 5X. That's going to do it here for the Fantasy NASCAR Podcast. Thanks for joining me. Like, subscribe, share, raceforthprize.com. That's where you can go to get access. I hope you enjoyed the Saturday morning show. We'll be back tomorrow for the Sunday morning show to do the Cup Series. I may even be able to produce that later in this evening. It just depends on how things unfold throughout the day. Like, subscribe, share. You know, i very blessed to have you guys here, and I truly mean that. And if you're still here, then I am truly blessed. And I love you guys. And Trip to Light, fantastic.